Hello again, garden friends. Welcome to this cloudy but not rainy winter day. In my area, it's rare that we get several days without rain this time of year, so I am taking full advantage in getting some late winter, early spring chores done. So come with me and I'll show you what I have going on in the garden. Today, I'm going to be winter pruning my blackberries. I prune my blackberries twice a year, once in late summer and once in late winter. Most blackberries are floricane fruiting, which means they produce fruit on two-year-old canes. They will send up a new shoot, this is called the primocane. It won't produce fruit in that first year. It will overwinter and in the second year it's called a floricane and it will produce fruit. So you can remember fruit floricane. In late summer after those floricanes are done fruiting I prune them off at ground level. I also prune the primocanes in a way that will help them produce more fruit the following year. Right now in late winter these are all floricanes. These were the primocanes that grew last year. In a few months I'll have lots of new primocanes growing up from the ground. Today I'm going to be pruning those lateral branches this is where the fruit will grow. For example this was a primocane that grew last year and for erect and semi-erect varieties I tip prune them which means I cut off the top you can see the cut I made right there at about three feet and that will force the plant to put energy into these lateral branches which is where the majority of the fruit will grow. I also have trailing blackberries and these I just tip prune at about five feet and for the most part during the summer I just let these lateral branches grow. They can get pretty long so if they get longer than about six or seven feet I will tip prune them but you don't want to prune off too much during the summer because the plant needs those leaves in order to store energy but this year I want those canes putting energy into making fruit so we're going to prune them to help them do that so the first thing I'm going to do is remove any diseased damage or weak looking canes for example this is a tiny little cane it doesn't have a lot of lateral branches so I'll prune that one this one too is a pretty weak cane then I'm going to thin these canes. Blackberries are pretty vigorous. They'll send up lots of new shoots and they'll start to compete for nutrients. So in a space of about four feet, I'm going to keep my strongest six to eight canes. Now these floricanes are thinned down to the strongest canes. Next, I'm going to tag all of my floricanes with this plant tape tool. This is usually used for tying plants to supports like tomatoes to stakes but I started doing this a few years ago and it makes it so much easier to identify those floricanes when it's time to prune them in the late summer. At that point, it can be difficult to tell which cane is what, especially if you've had a lot of new primocanes come up and there's lots of leaves. And by tagging these at the base, I can just go in and easily see exactly which cane I need to prune off. Floricanes are marked. The next thing I'm going to do is prune off any low growing lateral branches about 12 inches from the soil. This will help prevent splashback from the soil causing disease on the plants. The last thing I have to do is prune these really long lateral branches. Most of the fruit production is going to be close to this main cane. So I'm going to prune them to about 18 to 24 inches from that main stem. You can see I pruned off quite a bit, but now the canes won't have to put so much energy over such a large surface area. Instead, they can put energy into forming fruit. This is my pollinator garden, and I have quite a few things that I need to get done before a lot of these plants start really growing. In fact, because we've had a few warmer days lately, I see things already coming up. Hyacinth tulips, columbine, sedum, lupin, so I really need to get going. The majority of the plants in my pollinator garden are herbaceous perennials, which means they're gonna send up new growth from the ground each year. Unless I had an issue with disease, I leave up all of that old growth over the winter. This provides shelter for beneficial insects and the seed heads also are a food source for birds. During late winter the majority of this will be completely pruned off at ground level to make way for that new growth. But let me show you something I do this time of year that can be a benefit to both beneficial insects and your garden. If you have any plants that form these really thick stems like this rose mallow hibiscus, instead of pruning the old growth all the way to the soil line, leave about 12 to 18 inches. Here's one that I actually left last winter. 
The reason is these old hollow stems provide excellent places for cavity nesting bees to lay eggs. You can see this little hole drilled in this older stem. There's another one and another. These cavity nesting bees are some of the earliest pollinators to emerge and are great for things like fruit trees that bloom in early spring. So again, I'll prune all of this old growth down to about 12 to 18 inches. It will stay there until spring of next year, like this branch, when those bees emerge. And now I just need to clean up the rest of this old growth. How you winter prune raspberries will just depend on the type of raspberries you are growing. I grow three different kinds in my garden. I have black raspberries, summer raspberries, which are floricane or second year cane bearing raspberries. I also have fall bearing raspberries, which are primocane or first year cane fruiting raspberries. And they all are pruned slightly different. I'll start with my black raspberries because I prune them almost identically to my blackberries. Like the blackberries, after the floricanes are done fruiting, I prune those off at soil level. Also in the late summer, I tip prune those new primocanes to encourage more lateral branch growth. The only difference with black raspberries is I tip prune those at three feet. Lateral branches on black raspberries can get crazy long and if you allow them to droop and touch the soil, they actually can start to root, which is fine if you want to grow more plants, but I like to prune mine at about six or seven feet and tie them to my lines just to keep them supported and healthy over the winter. Winter. But now it's late winter, early spring, and just like those blackberries, I'm going to tip prune those lateral branches to about 18 to 24 inches to encourage bigger fruit. And I'll use a tape tool to mark this year's flora canes. This will make it a lot easier to see which canes I need to prune in late summer. Just a heads up, black raspberries have some pretty big thorns, so I am wearing triple layers today, long sleeves, garden sleeves, and heavy gloves. Summer red raspberries, like blackberries, produce on two-year-old canes. So at the end of the summer, once they're done fruiting, I will prune those off at ground level. But I don't usually do any sort of tip pruning on those new prima canes. I also don't do any lateral branch pruning in the late winter because they really don't get super long lateral branches like black raspberries and blackberries do. But raspberries are vigorous growers and they'll send up a ton of new canes each year. So now that these are flora canes, I'm going to thin them a little bit. This will help reduce nutrient competition between the canes. It will also help create a little bit more airflow and hopefully help prevent fungal diseases. I'll start by pruning any weak looking or diseased or damaged canes. I also like to prune any canes that are growing really far away from my soaker lines. And then I'll just go back and thin the canes, leaving about five to six per foot. And last, just like with the black raspberries, I'll tag those flora canes. Fall bearing raspberries are the easiest to prune because they fruit on those new prima canes coming up each year. So in late winter, I prune all of these old canes off at the soil line. One of the last garden chores I do in late winter is add soil amendments and fertilizer to my blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. All of these get fertilized twice a year, once in late winter, early spring, and again in late spring. I like using an organic slow release fertilizer. I use Berry Tone by Espoma because it has a little bit of sulfur in it and my soil pH tends to run pretty high. My blueberries, however, need an additional amendment to keep them healthy. I was checking on them today and I just noticed that one of my newer ones didn't make it over the winter, which is a bummer. So I'll have to replace that this spring. Blueberries prefer a very acidic soil, 4.5 to 5.5. 
and my native soil because of all the limestone we have in the area tends to be above seven which is too high to keep blueberries really healthy so I add additional sulfur to lower that pH now I do soil tests every few years in this bed because I want to make sure that the pH isn't getting too low but the tests have shown me that the soil pH in this bed just tends to rise again after a while so I know I'm probably going to have to always amend this bed and I do this twice a year in the spring and fall Thanks so much for joining me today as I finished up some late winter garden chores. Once again, my name is Jessica and I make videos aimed at helping beginner gardeners. So don't forget to follow me on my other social media pages so you don't miss anything. I'll link them below. And come join me in the garden this year. I have so many new things I'm trying out. I can't wait to show you. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.